Welcome to Scuttlebutt Lodge. On Friday, September 22nd, the first day of the fall of Justin Trudeau, Canada's Parliament welcomed and applauded a standing ovation for a former SS Nazi soldier in our Parliament. This coincided with a state visit by Ukrainian's President Zelensky. So joining me today to expose the facts and reveal the falsehoods surrounding this momentous Ukrainian Easter egg that Justin Trudeau has just laid is my daughter, Chelsea, joining me for a family chat at Scuttlebutt Lodge. Welcome. Hello, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, where do you think we should start? Um, maybe just talk about a little bit about what happened and about some of the history uh, around World War II and, and perhaps why um, at least one uh, 338 members of parliament might have had an indication that there was something wrong when Speaker Anthony Rota introduced um, uh, Yaroslav Hunka. Well, let's let's start. Everybody is throwing everybody under the bus right now, uh, and people are being the fall guy like Rota. Um, uh, everybody is pleading ignorance and stupidity and pointing fingers. So. What we do know is this, that this former Ukrainian SS, he was a member of the Waffen SS. He enlisted with the Waffen SS, um, Nazi Germany's famous units in Ukraine um, during Second World War. We also know that the Allies were allied with the former USSR, yes. which Ukraine was a part of, in fighting against Nazism and Hitler, right? The USSR suffered more casualties, both civilian and military, than all other of the Allied armies and populations. So they were our allies. This resident of Ukraine enlisted with the Germans. And on Friday, Anthony Rota and our parliament honored his fighting against our former ally. Yeah, and do you want to, do you feel like you want to talk a little bit about um, the role that Russia played, not just in, in their amount of casualties, but how their uh, allyship during World War II um, contributed to the, the West winning against Nazi Germany? Well, I think, you know, most people who have even a cursory understanding of military history and the history of World War II recognize that we would not have defeated Nazism. We would not have defeated Hitler without um, the USSR's involvement. The Eastern Front, Stalingrad, Leningrad, you know, the, the history, even, um, even a, a very elementary understanding of World War II uh, would illustrate the importance and the significance of their involvement in the fight against Nazism. But I think, you know, and, and all 338 Canadian parliamentary parliamentarians ought to know that very basic history. Um, so, but I think what's important is in our, um, in this hysterical political environment of everything Russia is bad and everything Ukraine is good, um, you know, the Canadian Parliament, it, coinciding with Zelensky's visit, decided that this was appropriate way to 
maneuver public opinion to give even more money to Ukraine by using this 98-year-old um, individual as a prop to yeah. gain more money. Yeah, and, and I think we're going to get into that yeah. uh, in a bit. And just in case uh, anyone watching is unaware, the total amount of money that Canada promised uh, Ukraine last Friday on September 22nd was $1.6 billion. Uh, so $650 million of that is for um, military, and then the remainder is for uh, social and mental health programs in Ukraine. Uh, this all while uh, we know Canadians are suffering, um, you know, after three years of mandates and lockdowns, um, and rising inflation because of very inappropriate uh, spending by our government. So, you know, that's something that people should should be aware of if you're not already. Yeah, I think one thing, you know, in the last year, the Canadian government has provided the Ukraine military for their military operation $9 billion in funding. Yes. That's more money than we fund our own military for right. by a significant amount. But let's just get into, so now we're seeing that Justin Trudeau is using the speaker, Anthony Rhoda, and Rhoda yes. has come up with a statement accepting all the blame. And Rhoda is just a fall guy, and I'll go on to explain why I say that. Um, uh, the leader of the opposition, Pierre Polyev, is now pleading ignorance and having no knowledge. I'll explain why that's a falsehood as well. Same with Jugmeet Singh. They're all pleading ignorance, and they're all throwing Rhoda or Justin Trudeau or each other under the bus. But they can do this because most, most Canadians are very unaware and have no knowledge of the practices and pr procedures in a parliament. Um, and, you know, in, in my experience and in, in observations, I would say most parliamentarians don't even know what the practices and policies are. And they just go with the flow with ever, whatever their party leadership tells them to do. But I want to stress this. Uh, for 15 years, I was in the Ontario Parliament. At a peer for, on two different occasions, I served as a deputy house leader. And the house leaders from each party meet every week to discuss, debate, and negotiate what is going to happen in the House every week? And part of that is the legislative agenda, which motions are going to be introduced, which bills are going to be introduced, how the parties are going to respond to those motions and bills. But also, significantly, whenever there is a visitor coming to the House, especially a state visit, mm -hmm. The House leaders negotiate every single detail of that event in advance. Right? They don't want any miscues. They don't want any faux pas. They want to prove to the people that this is a professional, respectful institution and it's perfect. So in my time, like we would discuss what was the leader's, what was the leader going to wear the day when this a particular visitor is coming? What demeanor would the leader show? How were all the other caucus members expected to behave? You know, we didn't want anybody picking their nose and caught on camera uh, during a substantial event like this. So every political party knew all the details down to the most trivial and the most insignificant. And uh, so for these people now to say that on this momentous occasion of Zelensky arriving at Canada's parliament, mm -hmm. that they were completely caught off guard and unawares yeah. to what the speaker was going to do? No, because the... 
During these house leaders meetings, all the staffers are there. Everything is also coordinated with the speaker's office as well. Like this is a seamless choreography of the legislature or the so, parliament. So let's talk about okay, so let's talk about what the if you can very like in a very quick maybe one sentence what is the role of the house leader and then we can maybe talk about who the house leaders are of the three main parties and then we can maybe just discuss briefly uh what a deputy house leader is or what role they play so the easy part the deputy is there to attend the meetings uh when the house leader is not available uh for certain uh, but also to attend when he is there and help communicate. Well, first off, to help negotiate the most appropriate, most advantageous position for their party during the proceedings in the House. Um, and then to come back to caucus and to sell it to caucus that what the negotiated agreement was uh, so that all of caucus then can say, oh yes, well that's that's a good thing to do. We're going to all be good boys on this day. We're all going to wear our particular clothes. We'll um, yeah, maybe we'll ask for the speaker to give us unanimous consent to wear a colorful pin or to okay. show how okay. how important things are. And you know, like that's so basically this. they they help to curate an image. And that's negotiated by all parties within the House of Commons. That's right. That's okay. Yeah. So, so let's. They go are over. the they are the screenplay writers right. in this. Okay, so let's go over. Uh, you know, again briefly, who the the House leaders are. Um, so, for the Conservative Party of Canada, it's former uh, leader of the CPC Andrew Shear. He's mm -hmm. the House leader uh, for the. Con uh, sorry, for the Liberal Party, it is Karina Gold. Um, for the NDP, it is Peter Julian. Um, Deputy House Leader for CPC is Luke Bortold. And um, remind me, who is the Deputy House Leader for uh, the NDP? I think I have it written down somewhere. Uh, Lindsay Matheson. Lindsay Matheson, yeah, yeah, from London. I should remember that. Um, so... So let's let's go over some statements. I think it's important to just I'll, I'll say it's, it's important to note that neither Luke Berthold or Lindsay Matheson have made any kind of statement um, regarding what happened in the House on Friday. So maybe we can start with Anthony Rhoda's statement because he is the one who's really uh, taking all of the heat yeah. on this. So and just for people to bear in mind, the the speaker is a very unique position, receives a substantial amount of perks. He has his own home um, um, yeah, called Kingsmere in the Gadmills. So he is provided with a full uh, butler staff, maid, cleaning, um, extensive household budgets, and uh, it's 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 a gem of a job he for is, a parliamentarian. Well, yeah, the speaker is perhaps uh, the best compensated yeah. um, person who sits in the House of Commons, and he also, although he's elected by his constituents, he also uh, is meant to be nonpartisan within the House yeah. um, to mo to to sort of referee what goes on in the House of but Commons. But let's make no mistake. He sits there at the pleasure of the majority yes. caucus. Everyone has to vote, not just the Liberal Party. Yeah. All all parliamentarians must uh, vote in the Speaker of but, the House. So he is secure in this very privileged position as long as the government is happy with yes. his results. Yeah. So in order to protect his leader, Justin Trudeau, um, and to retain his... Happy position. Yes. Um, <laughs> he has taken the hit. He's come out and he has said, um, on Friday, September 22nd, in my remarks following the address of the president of Ukraine, I recognized an individual in the gallery. I have subsequently become aware of more information, which causes me to regret my decision to do so. 
I wish to make clear that no one, including fellow parliamentarians and the Ukraine delegation, was aware of my intention or my remarks I delivered to him. So that would that part would have been true. They would not have known been given the script of what yes. the speaker yes. was going to say. But they would say. have known who he was. They would have known that the speaker was going to yes. recognize this individual. The House leaders would have known. And it was their responsibility to question and ask about who is being introduced into the well, house. Well, and I actually find that that's an interesting point that I think that we should lead into. Uh, we'll come back to Polyev's statement and Jagmeet's statement, but I find actually that's a great place to segue into Andrew Shear's statement. Um, yes, yeah. Uh, who is the House leader for the Conservative Party of Canada. So what, what was it that Andrew Shear said, his very brief <laughs> statement? So this is the House leader for the Conservatives, former leader of the Conservative Party. We had a Nazi in Parliament. A simple Google search could have prevented that. And that is true. Yes. That is a, a, a truthful statement. What he failed to say in that is it was his responsibility yes. to do that Google search. Yes. Um, it was his responsibility to ask, what is the name of this individual who is going to be honored by where, who the speaker is going to ask us to honor and applaud. Yes. Who is he? Yeah. Right? Um, and especially so because it was going to coincide with a, a, a state visit by the Ukrainian president. Yeah. Um, so that was sheer. Um, and, um, and who... Um, um, we got... Peter. Oh, the Liberals, uh, the Liberal House leader. This now, this is another. Oh, one. Karina Gold. Yes, quite. Yeah, quite something. Yeah, yeah. Like all MPs, I had no further information than the speaker provided. Exiting the chamber, I walked by the individual and took a photo. We've seen that photo yes. op. Yeah, yes. it wasn't just a walk by. No. Uh, as a descendant of Jewish Holocaust survivors, I would ask all parliamentarians to stop politicizing this issue, troubling to too many, myself included. That was Karina Gould. That was Karina, yeah. Um, and of course, um, to say, I have never yet seen a politician not exploit a political miscue, a political yes. faux pas, yes. a political, uh, an, an example of political incompetence. Uh, so now they're all trying to exploit it and the fingers are off. It's just a dog's right. breakfast out there. Yeah. So, okay, so let's hear, uh, so what did, uh, I don't know, do you want to do Jugmeat or Polyev next? Uh, let's, let's do, uh, um. We'll do Juggy. Juggy. Okay. And, and of course, I know him from my, his time in the Ontario legislature as well, <laughs> where he was very, um, deceitful in his yes actions at well the he interior. did like to drive his bmw into downtown toronto and then hop on his bike and roll up his pant leg and and cycle into queen's park so yes, yes yeah. yeah he's very we know we know him well yes <laughs> so according to jagmeet singh it says i share the concerns about the individual honored with his standing ovation in the house of commons on friday he was not a guest of the NDP, that's, that's truthful, mm -hmm. and we were not aware of his background or association with the Nazi regime of World War II. They didn't ask to do the Google search. They, they didn't do the Google search either, that's right, yep. Yeah. The, this event has caused harm to the Jewish community, and for that I am sorry. New Democrats will be raising our concerns about how this was allowed to happen with the government directly. We must all stand together against the rising tide of anti-Semitism. And of course, what, one of the ironic parts of that is um, the NDP's well-known history and position on Israel. They are not generally seen as yes. um, a pro-Israel by any fashion. But but that just goes to show as well, it's like all these 
what is politically expedient? What is politically beneficial? They will say what needs to be said in order to uh, come out looking the best they possibly can, yeah. whether it's a lie or not. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is, that, that's basically... Okay, so... They'll put as much makeup on the pig as they need that's to. That's right. So let's hear what Peter Julian had to say. Peter Julian. Uh, he's, yeah, he's on the... He's the, the, house, uh, he's the house leader for... Uh, the NDP. I think he's on oh, the yes, top really here. Top. Yeah. Unfor this is Peter Julian. Unfortunately, I believe a sacred trust has been broken. NDP House That's Leader it. Peter Julian <laughs> says, as he calls on the House of Commons Speaker Anthony Rota to resign over his honouring during President Zelensky's visit of a Ukrainian who fought with a World War II Nazi unit. So, interesting. He wants Anthony Rota to resign yes. for honoring yes. this yes. Nazi. But it was all 338 right. MPs yep. who honored by a standing ovation, significant applause, and all in concurrence with, you know. And following Rota's address, which explicitly stated that he was a Ukrainian soldier fighting against Russia, who was our ally in World War II. Yeah. And that's, I mean, again, to restate the obvious, one person in the House of Commons should have at least been able to stop and pause and think, wait, that means he was fighting us. That's right. Like, and <laughs> to give you an example of that, um, I know we have one um, senior member of the Conservative Party who has a master's in Russian history, um, <laughs> who uh, is not just uh, an elementary understanding of the World War II vis-a-vis -vis, mm -hmm. uh, Russia and, and Nazi, uh, um, that everybody should have known that. If you're fighting against Russia, then yes. you were fighting for Nazis. That's right. Um, but that one member is a member here in Lanark, uh, Scott Reed. He has a master's in... Russian history. Um, that's awkward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's awkward. And he's also, his mom was Jewish. Right. Um, so even more awkward. And, and still, this man stood up right. and applauded someone. Um, uh, yeah, so, so, okay, so we, so we're gonna, we're getting into how could this have happened. So let's hear what Polyev had to say. And following Polyev, maybe we can hear what uh, what Lanceman had to say. Uh, the you know the deputy, not what what's her actual role? Dip, deputy She's leader. a deputy leader. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we'll hear what Polyev has to say, yeah. and then we will hear what uh, Melissa Lanceman had to add, who also is Jewish. Interestingly enough. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. People, you might hear these terms, but have very little understanding yes. of what is a deputy leader. What is yes. a House leader, what yes. is a caucus chair? There are uh, identified roles within the practices and procedures yes. within the House of Commons that uh, pay additional money to people who are named to these yes. positions and by the And So leader. these people are either part of cabinet if they're part of government or they're part of the shadow cabinet if oh. they are in opposition. But they're there. And they have to, a role. To have a responsibility yes. to ensure the smooth professional operation of the House yes. of Commons so that, again, uh, that the public sees a perfect facade and doesn't see any of the All the world's a stage. Yeah, yeah. Um, so with Polyev, he says, it has come out today that Justin Trudeau personally met with an honored a veteran of the 14th Waffen Grenadier Division of the SS. Okay, that's pretty clear. Um, liberals then arranged for the Nazi veteran to be recognized on the floor of the House of Commons during the visit of Ukrainian president. But again, that would have been organized, orchestrated, choreographed by all the House leaders. Um, um, this is an appalling error in the judgment on the part of Justin Trudeau. Of course, Polyev is now trying to get finger pointed yes. back to Justin yes. instead of to Anthony Rhoda, yes. uh, whose personal protocol office is responsible for arranging and vetting all guests and programming for state visits. Yes, for state visits, 
but it has to be done and is, let me explain this. Whenever they're, the only people who are permitted to address the parliament are elected members of the parliament. Mm -hmm. For anybody else to speak in the chambers requires a the unanimous consent from all parties by all members. Right. Any any single MP could have prevented that from happening. Right. Uh, right. And again, that's what the yeah, House leaders arrange for. They agree that there'll be a unanimous consent. They go back to their mm -hmm. caucuses and they we're going to give them a unanimous consent, and we're going to get a little something on the side of right. for being nice and yeah. negotiating and, and this. Yeah, and so that's so that I think that's a really important point is that any one of the three hundred and thirty-eight members of our parliament could, could have, have just just done a Google search, done a Google search, <laughs> and uh, including Andrew Shear, yeah. who is appalled that no one did a Google search, uh, and not just our members of parliament, because let's be real, it's actually their staff who do the work, yeah. you know. So not just did the 338 not do a yeah. Google search, but all of their multitudes of staff also didn't bother yeah. to do a Google search. And, and let me just give a historical example of this. Um, years ago, um, there was a unanimous consent motion in the House of Commons to recognize Nelson Mandela as a great... Yes. Ron Anders. Great. One conservative MP at the time refused to allow that to happen. Yes. His name was Rob Anders, yes. a member for Calgary. Uh, he would not grant the unanimous consent. Yes. So, you know, although uh, the government, the speaker, all these people are involved in orchestrating and ar arranging for a state visit, it all comes back down to the House leaders. Yes. Uh, negotiating how it's going to be portrayed to the public, getting concurrence from all their members, getting everybody mm -hmm. to buy in to make it appear that they're all. Um, so anyway, then uh, uh, Polyev goes on to further mislead. Uh, without warning or context, it was impossible for any parliamentarian in the room other than Mr. Trudeau to know of this dark past. And that's a lie. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Trudeau must personally apologize and avoid passing the blame to others. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> you know, and again, Polyev says, I'm not to blame. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, Andrew Shears, I'm not to blame. Mm -hmm. uh, Gould, I'm not to blame. Yeah. Julian, I'm not to blame. Nobody's yeah. to blame. Uh, this was just a total cluster muck up. Yes. Uh, and nobody is to blame yes. except somebody else well and of course trudeau wants to put rhoda under the bus but polyev wants to put trudeau under the bus because if trudeau is forced to resign then we'll have a, a, an election yeah. Yeah. called you know in in the near future but for trudeau he wants rhoda to resign because if rhoda resigns then they can elect a new speaker who's going to do the bidding of the 338 yeah. parliamentarians so. um so you know this is all it's all just power play nonsense and theater yeah it's all like theatrical. I said, all the world's a stage, right? you know. But I think one of the uh, there is a you know, uh, this fella, this 98 year old man, could have lived out his life in peaceful, yes. Um, um, uh, but I, you know, two things I'll say first off, it is obvious that we have 338 inept fools, yes, um, in our. House of Commons. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Keystone cops only had a dozen or so. We have 338 Keystone cops uh, uh, running around Parliament Hill. But, but I think even more important is for the Canadian public to understand the, how pol politicians, political parties manipulate and dupe people and um, and they have a great many ways of do, doing this. We've seen it, especially over the last four years, um, propaganda and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and this, I guess he would have been 18 years old, 80 years ago, uh, Ukrainian resident enlists with the Waffen SS. He would have done that due to the political pressures, the political propaganda, the, the messaging of the 
Nazi political party, yes. Adolf Hitler's political party, um, and the propaganda. Uh, and he chose to, fought, to fight on the side of evil, probably because he believed the propaganda that he was being told. Yeah, and he likely felt that he was doing what the was right. The right thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, like you don't mobilize a whole country to do evil things mm -hmm. if they know that they're evil. Yes. They think they're doing yep. um, righteous or good things. Yeah. But 80 years later, after being duped by Adolf Hitler, 80 years later, this fella gets duped once again, yes. this time by the Canadian political system to be used as a pawn yes. um, in Parliament, to be used as a prop um, to, uh, to demonstrate our commitment to Ukraine and the similarities between Ukraine and yes. Canada. So in this fella who should have known better, yep. who should have said to himself, I've been duped by politicians before, I've been duped into committing wrongdoing and evil by mm -hmm. politicians before uh, and saying thanks but no thanks. He chose to be duped once again. And and, it, and that is, it's a tragedy. Yeah. You yeah. know, it, it, it really is a, an incredible story of human tragedy that, um, that even those of us who have lived, you know, through these experiences, who have you know been used as pawns in the past that we can't see it in the present yeah. and that we can't foresee it in the future and i think that's really the lesson that we need to take from this yeah. is well for the first lesson is that every single one of these members of parliament are lying about their foreknowledge well, well, Listen, there, there would be a whole bunch of them. I'm not saying any of them didn't know. I'm saying the ones no, who no. have made statements. The, the ones who have made statements. Yeah, like, listen, most of the 338 are are very happy yes. and find it nice um, just to follow orders. Well, you know, just, you know, <laughs> just to follow orders. Isn't like, that, uh, you know, that's, a, and, that's a great, yeah, that's a great, I, I think that might actually be a great place to end it on yep. is uh, is the idea that um, maybe instead of just following orders, we should ask questions. Ask questions and think. Yeah. Listen, thanks for joining us today uh, for our family chat at Scuttlebutt Lodge. If you'd like to come up, uh, the, uh, go to No More Lockdowns. Scuttlebutt Lodge is available for rent. Uh, very modest. It's a, a if, and if you want to have some good conversation, good discussion in a very free environment <laughs> um, in rural Ontario, uh, go to nomorelockdowns.ca, visit Scuttlebutt Lodge, and we'd love to have you join us here at the Lodge. Absolutely.